Today, we're getting back to our discussion on knee pain relief injections. Now, last week we covered cortisone. Today, this is number two of four injections, and we're focusing on hyaluronic acid, or also known as synvisc or orthovisc. All right, stay tuned. I'm Robin Robertson, founder of Healthy Knees Coach and international best selling author. I figure I was born with a crappy pair of knees so that I could help you avoid the mistakes that I made and benefit from the many successes I achieved in my long and sorted knee history. Fast forward past multiple knee surgeries, ultimately with both knees replaced, plenty of life experience and study into the latest research for knees, and I'm stronger and healthier than I've ever been. I want to help you get there too. I share these lessons with you that will change your knees and probably change your life to give you the strength, stamina, and stability to get back to doing the things that you love. If you suffer from knee pain or want to avoid it altogether, you are in the right place, friend. Let's get started. So uh, how about hyaluronic acid? Okay. That's probably the second most thing I would inject. Mm. Um, hyaluronic acid, there's high molecular weight and low molecular weight. Um, our American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons came out with a blanket statement, uh, position statement on this and said it's all placebo. One wow. group of orthopedic surgeons that may or may not be biased because of investment and involvement in the company, mm. strongly disagreed and have been lobbying them to come out and say, high molecular weight hyaluronic acid, which is Synvisc. Okay, yes. So Synvisc is a brand. Yes. A lot of people say, I want a Synvisc injection, and kind of like people say, I want Kleenex. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's a lot of different types of tissue. Right. Kleenex being one of them. A lot of different kinds of uh, hyaluronic acid, one brand being Synvisc. There's Orthovisc and Euflexa and just yeah. a whole, there's a whole bunch of them. Anyway. So the research or the studies on high, high um, molecular weight uh, hyaluronic acid um, seem to in, make it a little bit more likely it's not a placebo, but it's still, okay. you know. So what I did, I, I didn't offer that first because uh, I know cortisone works. Yes. Um, but if their knee wasn't very arthritic and I was hesitant to give them more than the, cortis the one cortisone shot to get them over the uh, bad episode, I would be more open to giving them hyaluronic acid. And certainly if a patient came in to see me and said, you know, I just moved here from California or whatever, and I was getting hyaluronic acid injections every six months, because those mm. are every six months, um, and they work great for me. I'm not going to say, sorry, I'm not going to do that. For yeah. You, you know, I, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I tell them my spiel. Not many people believe this is real, but for you, if it's working, you know, and you're willing to... Your insurance will pay for it and all. Yes. I mean, there's no harm in doing it. And what is it supposed to do? Well, uh, initially they thought that it was going to be a viscous uh, fluid to put into the knee joint. It would act as a cushion. Yeah. A um, little f reduced friction. Yeah, like new motor oil instead yes. of old motor oil, you know? Yeah. Because we do know that your joint fluid uh, loses its ability to be a cushion. It loses viscosity okay. when you get arthritic. It gets runny. Yeah. Okay, so I thought, oh, I'll put this nice new rich motor Thick. oil in yeah. there, you know, uh, Valvoline, yeah. you know, <laughs> and um, they, they found that that wasn't the case. And and it certainly doesn't build cartilage. Right. Yeah, they, some people tried to say, oh, well, you know, it's going to help my cartilage grow back. Mm. And nothing does that. Nothing does no. that. And then they thought, well, maybe it's uh, acting as an anti-inflammatory uh, somehow. Um, you know, they, they've done studies where they put a tracer in it so mm. they could see where it is. It doesn't even stay in the knee joint. Oh. So it can't be. That's uh, part of the issue then, yeah, right? Yeah, if it, it doesn't stay there. It doesn't stay in the knee joint. So the tracer was all gone. It was out in the body. Oh. So that's why I think maybe instead of a mechanical benefit, like the um, shock absorber effect, it was maybe an anti-inflammatory getting into the, li the lining of the knee joint and reducing inflammation. So, and insurance companies are not paying for that so much um, anymore? Some have not. Some have pulled back because of the studies showing it didn't do anything more than placebo. Our Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons coming out and saying it is a placebo. Some insurance companies won't pay for mm. um, And some 
won't pay for certain brands, but they'll pay for other brands, and it's not even the right. brands that you think they should pay for. Medicare, when I at least you know last year when, before I retired, Medicare paid for all of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so money, money's of no issue. Yeah. Medicare, <laughs> to our federal right. government. Yeah. <laughs>